Hello everyone, this is Captain Orlando Muniz with Nomad Fishing Charters and today I'm going to show you one of the rigs I like to use for bottom fishing, depths of anywhere between 100 and 300 feet for fish such as muttons, grouper and amberjack. Stay tuned. Before we get into specifics, let's talk a little bit about the tackle. For bottom fishing at these depths, you want to use a conventional rod. This is about a six and a half foot uh, conventional to custom built rod, but it doesn't have to be custom built. It's got a Winthrop butt, so you can use it as a bent butt when needed. This is especially useful for amberjack and things of that nature where you don't want to, you know, break your back. Um, it's also got a Pen 16 VS. It's a two-speed reel. One push of the button turns it into low speed. So if you have ladies or young anglers who maybe don't have the, the brute strength for certain fish, you could actually put this in low gear. It's a one-to-one, -one, and you'd be surprised what you can hoist off the bottom. The reel also has an excellent drag, which is okay. There are many ways to rig a bottom rod. I'm going to show you one of the ways that I've used and that works really well. And pretty much anybody can make this rig. Uh, and it's been shown. I've caught a lot of really nice fish on it. It'll work for just about anything. Okay. Everything starts with doubling the line. Like I said, I'm using 65 pound braid here. You can probably go down to 40 or 50 if you like. But for me, this is, I've found this to work the best. 50 is a close second. So I start with a spider hitch. I do this pretty much with everything. So go around. If you don't know how to make a spider hitch, I will be coming out with some videos in the near future on how to make these knots. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for that. So I'm going to go ahead and just cinch it down. Keep it nice and tight. You can use a bimini twist also. Before you go any further, I like to straighten my line out, make sure that double line is nice and straight and the two lines are perfectly parallel. And you're going to take a small barrel swivel, it doesn't have to be a fancy swivel, it could be one of these cheap crane swivels and I'll explain why it could be one of these cheap crane swivels here shortly. We're going to go right through there like that and that's just going to dangle on your main line just like so. Okay. Then you're going to come to your main swivel. This swivel here does need to be a good swivel. This is a Spro, probably about 300 pound Spro. You don't have to go that heavy, but this will help cut down on tangles and so forth. So you're going to take your double line, go through there, and then you can tie any knot you want. I usually use a clinch knot, an improved clinch knot. So we're around four or five times. And we'll close that off. Alright, there you have it. Trim it. Time to get new scissors. All right. So right now, this is what you have. You have your, your double line, your hanging swivel. We're going to use this to attach the sinker later, and then your main swivel. Okay. To this main swivel, you're going to attach your leader. The leader should be no less than 30 feet. Okay. You can go longer. You can go shorter, but I, I would recommend no less than 30. Okay. How long you make the leader is up to you. Now, I like to go longer if I'm fishing deeper or if the current's running faster, okay? It also depends on where you're fishing. If you're at a spot where the bottom, maybe you're on a wreck which has a real high profile and you're afraid you're gonna lose a fish to the wreck, maybe you wanna shorten that leader a little bit. If you're on a bottom that's very forgiving, then you might wanna go longer. The advantage to the longer leader is that the bait's gonna look that much more natural in the water and you're more likely to get a bite. Okay, let's move on to the next step. For my main leader, I typically use 50 pound test monofilament. Now, you can go as high as 80 or 100. You normally don't have to, okay? Uh, I find that 50 works 90% of the time. All right, and I'm going to take it. I'm going to start by making a, again, nothing fancy, just a clinch knot. MDM like that, it's perfect. And we're going to take about 30 feet of this. Now I'm not going to sit there and measure it. An arm length is about six foot, so I'm going to do that five or six times. That's 12, 18, 24, 30, do 36. Okay, doesn't have to be an exact length. 
All right. Now on this end, you could either tie your hook, and I'll show you. Again, you can use a clinch knot. To finish it off like that and then you're ready to go fishing now what I do is I take it a step further okay I use fluorocarbon okay there it is all right the fluorocarbon is a little stiffer it's more abrasion resistant and it's also not as visible as monofilament so what I like to do is take a piece of fluoro some guys would say, well, why don't you just use floral to begin with? The problem with floral is that it's very expensive, so you don't need to use 40, 50 feet of floral. You can just tie on, you know, 8 or 10 feet of floral, and that'll do the same job. The way I attach my floral with my main line, or my leader line, I should say, is I use a blood knot. blood knot is especially useful when you're joining lines of similar diameter okay there you have it okay it's a very strong knot I have rarely had one fail I'm not gonna say it's never happened but it's very rare usually something else fails before that knot fails okay there you have and then on this last end you can go ahead and tie your hook onto that and you're ready for a bait at that point again you can use uh, I like to use a uni knot because I like my baits to have as much freedom as possible so I like to have a little loop there at the end I'll take that adjust it and using my pliers I can take it and cinch it down that unit knot gives the, the hook a lot more freedom and the bait's going to be able to move around a lot freer okay now what type of hook are we using we're using a circle hook I prefer circle hooks for any type of deep water fishing especially bottom fishing uh, the circle hook kind of is made to work unassisted and will catch those fish that are way way down uh, especially fish that are leader shy like muttons and things like that uh, so the circle hook is what I recommend which circle hook depends on your preference I, I think they all work pretty good if you're confident in them uh, you have, just have to try them out and see which one you like I like this one here from Eagle Claw it works really good it's called a C circle it's a five odd but I've used other hooks with good success as well um, you could also vary the size of the hook depending on the type of baits you're using as far as baits, you can use a large pilcher, a herring, a live ballyhoo, you can use a speedo, you can use a pinfish, a grunt, pretty much anything you can find, uh, even a cigar minnow. You can put that down on the bottom, they'll all get eaten to varying degrees. It kind of depends on what you're targeting and you know how deep you're fishing and what's available. So there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, you'll pick that up as you go. Uh, in another video, I'll show you how to bridle bigger baits and how to use bigger baits and also go into the knots and connections a little more. Before we move on, I want to talk about deploying your bait. Obviously, the bait is going to be hooked through both lips, okay, unless you're fishing a, uh, a slab of bonita or something like that. But if you're using a live bait, you're going to go through both lips so that the bait tracks and swims freely behind the boat. The other thing you're going to do is, once the boat is stopped, if you're drifting, you want to take your hook, your bait, hook it as fast as you can, try not to handle the bait too much, toss it out away as far as you can get it away from the boat, and then gently put your sinker in the water and let it down slowly. One of the mistakes that people make is they'll put the reel into the freeze pool and just let it drop like a rock. The problem with that is, eventually this bait will catch up to your main line and it'll just wrap around your main line then you're gonna have a big mess it'll look like a pile of spaghetti you don't want it you don't want that so you want to drop it slowly and let the bait stay as far away from that main line as possible once it reaches the bottom you want to let it hit the bottom bring it up a few turns and just let it sit there you watch that rod tip you don't want to twang on the line 
pretend it's a banjo or a guitar. You want to leave it alone. I like to fish them in the rod holder and just watch the rod tip. When the rod tip bends over and you got a bite, the fish is starting to you know load the rod, then it's time to crank. Okay? So hopefully I'll have some videos pretty soon on how to do that. Alright. The next step I want to show you is how to put the rig back on the rod without making a mess. Okay? Very easy. Take your hook, you put it around this first guide right here, you pull on the line, you stretch it, and you come under the reel. Actually, let me turn around here a little bit so you can see a little better. You're going to go under the reel and then over the reel. So you're going to go around the reel like that, and you're just going to keep going, keep doing it until you reach the swivel. Sometimes it gets a little difficult toward the end, you get some twist in the line. Alright, there you have it. Now I can just put the reel in gear and turn the handle. Handle a little hard because the leader is pushing down on it. That's okay. Okay, now this can store just like this. Nice and clean. When you're ready to go fishing again, all you do is you take that top of the line, you pull on it, and the whole thing comes right off without any major incidents. You won't have any tangles or anything. You can literally put it right back in the water. Okay, let's do that one more time. We're gonna go under and over. There you have it, nice and tight. You can make some minor adjustments if you need to. This piece here, if it bothers you, you can take it, wrap it around the rod, or you can take a piece of uh, copper wire or a rubber band and rubber band it to the rod, or you can even cut it off and just retie it. It's not a big deal. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I plan to come out with some more videos here in the near future. Uh, we may have one just dedicated to just knots, actually maybe a two or three part series on knots. Uh, the most important thing is that you hit that like button and you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you subscribe for so you don't miss any of these future videos. Again, my name is Captain Orlando Muñiz with Nomad Fishing Charters. Thanks again and stay safe.